Hi, my name is Bertolf and welcome to this video with a tutorial of my song Team Hoover. The song will appear on my album Blue Finger which will be released in September of this year, 2023. And since I released it like a couple of weeks ago, I got a lot of questions of people who asked me whether I wanted to do a tutorial and maybe make a tap. So I've made a tap. It's actually tablature and notes and chord diagrams and all that. Uh, there's a link to it in the description below and you can grab it for free, so be sure to do it. And there's also a link to the tune for the people who aren't familiar with it yet. First, let me explain something about the song title. It's called Team Hoover because I was playing guitar in the living room on the couch and my two sons were jumping and running around the living room playing a game called Team Hoover. And Team Hoover is their team of superheroes they made up themselves. Uh, the oldest son, he's a jump master. My youngest son is speed master. I'm fly master and my wife is bear woman. So we're a little family of superheroes. I think the, the tune that I was starting to write was echoing their high and playful energy. I wanted to call it child's play, but then I remembered that there's already another bluegrass, newgrass instrumental by that name by, uh, by Bela Fleck and Edgar Meyer and uh, Mike Marshall on their record Uncommon Ritual. So I later renamed it. The song was recorded in May 2022 in the Sound Emporium studio in Nashville with an absolute dream team of musicians, musicians who I've been listening to since I've been like maybe eight years old or something. It has Jerry Douglas on dobro, Stuart Duncan on fiddle, Mark Schatz on bass, uh, David Benedict on mandolin and Wes Corbett on banjo. And it was all beautifully recorded by David Cinco. And he used uh, two Telefunken M582s at the sides of the guitar, like one pointing at the 12th fret, I think, and the other uh, towards the bridge. And a uh, uh, AEA Nouveau 8 ribbon mic uh, before the sound hole. And I think the guitar sounds great on the recording. The guitar that I recorded uh, the tune on is actually a different guitar than I have here today. Uh, this is a Martin Custom Shop D28. It's not mine. I'm fortunate enough to know a guy in my neighborhood who actually owns a fantastic collection of great guitars. So uh, I may borrow this one from him. It has a Aridondack. Aridondack? Adirondack there. I didn't know Aridondack. <laughs> it's, it's kind of different from Adirondack, but this guitar has an Aridondack. <laughs> it's got a uh, Adirondack spruce top and Brazilian rosewood back and sides. Because I, I thought it was kind of complicated and tricky to travel to the United States with a guitar with Brazilian rosewood, I decided to uh, borrow another guitar of this guy. And it's a Martin D42, which kind of has similar specs to this guitar, but it has Honduran rosewood easier to travel with. So let's talk about the song form, because it's actually a quite long form, a quite extended form, pretty different from the stuff that I usually write. But that's also one of the things that I think is cool about it. So let me tell you what the form is, and then we can look at all the separate parts uh, later. The song form is pre-intro, intro, then the theme, which is a A-A-B-A, -A, -A, a re-intro, a mandolin solo, beautiful mandolin solo played by David Benedict on the record. Another theme, we go A, A, B, and then there's a first bridge, which I call the C part. Another A, re-intro, guitar solo, which has the same chords as the mandolin solo, but just with a few extra chords and a few extra bars. Back to the theme, A, A, then we get the second bridge, which is the D part. One other A, then an outro, which is like the intro, but extended with a beautiful violin solo on top of it by Stuart Duncan. And we close off with the post outro, which mirrors the pre-intro. The song begins with a little pre-intro, which I think I actually wrote last as I was just thoughtlessly noodling around on the guitar. And I found this thing that I thought I would stick at the beginning and the ending of the song because it added to the playful character of the whole thing. It has a lot of pulling offs and hammering ons, and I, I found it quite hard to notate uh, rhythmically, but I think I got it in the end. So let me play it for you and then slow it down. So then we have arrived at the proper intro, which is actually a part I, I came up with using fuller chords, but I uh, don't play those fuller chords until the outro. I decided to simplify it a little bit, leave the 
bass notes to the bass play a little bit of a smaller shapes and all the shapes you can of, of course the chord shapes you can find in the tab so let me play it slowly for you first <laughs> Slide, long slide. So on to the main theme, which has a AABA form, and the AA thing goes over a simple ascending chords like this, F sharp minor, E with G in the bass, A with a 2-5 like F sharp minor to B7 sus4, and again you can find them in the sheet. It's like a theme with a lot of slides, a lot of long slides, and I change position playing those slides. Let me play it slowly for you first. Using open strings, a lot of open B and open E strings. And this is always kind of a tricky move for myself because I go from uh, finger number four, from the pinky, and then back to a slide with the second finger. Quite a long slide, so it takes a little bit of practice. Well, it took me a little bit of practice to get that slide right. Uh, and then I kind of played this little end riff with, with the first three fingers, although I presume that a, a good teacher would tell you you have to play that with your third and your fourth finger, but I played like this. Because those are just my stronger fingers, so it's easier for me to play it like that. And then I use open strings to open E's to get back to the bottom. Let me speed it up for you. And then we're on to the B part of the theme. And then we go to this part. Which are actually just broken chords. I could have opted to play them here. Uh, but they wouldn't have quite as much as uh, a note separation as uh, I play it like this, which is a bit of a stretch, but I think it sounds nicer in this context. So let me speed it up to the original tempo for you. And then we're back at a, another A and then a re-intro, but they're the same as before, so I don't have to go into that. So now we're uh, at the mandolin solo, which David Benedict played on the record. It's a brilliant solo, I think, and he played something uh, completely different each time that we did a take, but equally great, which is really mind-blowing to me. So we actually modulated here uh, at the beginning uh, of the mandolin solo to uh, the relative uh, minor key of G. We were in E and now we're in G. Bluegrass G. It has like a rhythm to it, uh, filled in with a little bit of cross picking. This is kind of my favorite B minor chord <coughs> because it has the the F sharp and the G, open G ringing next to each other and also the, the D and the E. I always really like minor seconds and seconds in my chord voicings, so this is one of my favorites.
And then we modulate to the key of A. Little thing is that uh, B minor is the third degree in G, but it's also the second degree in the key of A. So it functions as a kind of pivot chord. So then we're in A with an open B in E string. To C sharp minor with also open B and E, so it becomes C minor seventh. And here we do the same little trick with a pivot chord. Now we go to B, B sus4, also with the open B and E string. sharp minor with a with an open B string which is actually this the flat at sixth back to B and B becomes B seventh so we can go get back to the theme in E So we're almost halfway through this song and through this lesson. Uh, we're back at the main theme. We play AAB, same as before. And then we go to uh, the C part, or the first bridge, as I call it. I wrote it as a guitar melody first, but then uh, later I decided to give that melody to the dobro and the fiddle, because that's kind of my favorite combination of instruments ever, and especially when they're played by Jerry Douglas and Stuart Duncan. So here's the guitar part for the C part, slowly. C major 7 with G in the bass. Which I, call, I kind of call the D singer-songwriter chord now, because that's the D all singer-songwriters use all the time. But it's a beautiful chord. You could also leave, leave the first finger away, so you got a D6 with the A in the bass. Keep the B and the E strings ringing at all times. D singer songwriter. And here it is sped up. So then we go to another A part, a re-intro, and then we finally arrive at the most important part of the song, which is of course the guitar solo. <laughs> <laughs> so let me try and play the solo slowly for you and tell you a little bit about it. Start with the G chord, which is a little C chord over a G chord or G sus. B minor. Little tension note over a G chord. I play an A note and I resolve it like this. So I accent the, that uh, F sharp to a G, which is also in this voicing. to A, little sequence that I push forward over C sharp minor, same motive, little 
we'll pick up to uh, to the B chord, B sus actually. That's also that's all kind of B major pentatonic, I think. And then we're at D sharp minor playing this. It's actually Phrygian that I play there. Not a pickup to B. Which is kind of, in my head, uh, like a, a Pat Metheny kind of thing to play. And now we're at the extra chords of the guitar solo. It goes to, uh, which I, I guess you would have got to call a, a A sharp, but let's call it B flat for the sake of simplicity. I think I play Phrygian major there, which is like the Phrygian mode, but with a with a, a, a big a, a big third. On to E, doing this little stretch. And then we go to a B major pentatonic lick. And to the end lick of the solo, a uh, lick in, in, in six intervals with a open B ringing in between. Which takes us back to the A part. So now we're at the last theme, we play A, A again, and then we arrive at the second bridge or the D part. I guess you could say it modulates to the relative major. It's a little trick I, I learned from um, one of my favorite Beatles songs, Something, which is in C, but then modulates to the key of A for the uh, middle eight. C is kind of like A minor, so it's like going from uh, A minor to A major, going from a major chord or a major key to an even more major key. I do the same principle here, we're in E, and E is like C sharp minor, so we modulate to C sharp major. The banjo and the dobro play the theme here, and I play a little bit of a more funky background here. It has a little dampening also sometimes, like. So then we're at the outro, uh, which is like the intro and reintro. It's, it's only longer, and, and Stuart Duncan plays a, a fantastic improvised solo on top of it. And I play uh, a little bit of fuller chords uh, compared to the intro and reintros. So all these chords are in the sheets, of course. So let me play it slowly for you. Speed it up. I do th this little syncopated rhythm on the A minus six, like.
And then we're back at the pre-intro, or in this case, it's a post-outro. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was my first guitar tutorial ever. I hope you might have learned something from it. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, as someone should say on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Bye.